Hello and welcome to Decorative Hardware Specialty Applications, the second in our series of complimentary webinars from Orion Ornamental Iron. You know, today specialty is really the new normal. Um, home builders and developers are putting in window walls and arches and bays and corners and awning windows, all kinds of windows that require certain specialty applications when dressing them with soft window treatments and decorative heart. One of the first things we want, want to talk about is you know, how do you go about specifying those um, specialty applications and configurations? You know, well, first of all, you need to ask yourself, what are you trying to accomplish? What does the client want out of all of this? What are the performance expectations of the hardware that you're looking at? There's loads of options out there in the marketplace, but you have a certain set of expectations, how it's going to function and look, what are those? And then how does it need to operate? You know, whether it's ease of control, motorization, what have you, you really need to address the functionality of the specialty application. So. So a strategy checklist for you might be to talk about function, the architecture within the window in the room. There's always limitations, so you need to plan for those limitations. You need to discuss with the client what their expectations are. Often they bring to the table the fact that they want all kinds of things within one window covering, and sometimes they aren't willing to um, make exceptions. What kind of styling are you using and is the drapery hardware that you're choosing working with that style and with the fabric? But whether it's something as um, technical as drapery weights and will the rod function properly with the fabric you chose to um, maybe it's sheer and are you having issues with it blowing in a door or what have you. And then again, then from all of those, where do we go next with decorative hardware? Decisions, decisions, decisions. Before you start measuring, you must really do some pre-measured decisions. First off, determine the area you want to cover. This determines where to measure for the rod face width. How far past the opening do you want to go or can you go? Determining the direction of the draw or even the functionality. Will this treatment function or not? Or will it have limited functionality? You want to clear the glass for view, so do you need have stack back and you need to consider that. Is it going wall to wall? And you need to determine where you want to mount the rod. This is going to not only determine the finished length of the treatment, but it's going to answer questions like, will the hardware you choose work at the ceiling? Remember, you never put anything on the frame when you're doing custom window design. You have to make sure there's enough wall space not only above the top of the window, but you also have to consider either side. Then determine how many layers you have. How far out will you go and where will they come into? Determine your drapery length based on where you're mounting the rod and some of the other decisions we just previously discussed. Then you're ready to measure the window. You also want to become layer sav savvy. It's about creating layered window treatments. Not only is this going to offer you um, more revenue and a bigger upsell, but it's actually probably going to not only meet, but exceed your client's expectation. So, you know, in a lot of rooms of the house, there's no need for privacy. So really it's about the aesthetics of a window treatment. You can certainly start out with just aesthetics like layer one, Maybe it's just, uh, maybe it's aesthetics or maybe it's just a blind for function only. You know, then you move into layer two, which is function plus aesthetics. So you're getting your privacy, your light control, maybe energy efficiency, but you're also setting a mood in the room, in the environment. Then you move into layer three. You know, this is again, this is your upsell layer. This is that optional layer that's usually not needed, but certainly from a from an aesthetic standpoint is desired by lots of customers. So maybe you have your your blind or shade for privacy, light control, etc. You've got shears as a second layer, and then your third layer is um, your um, aesthetics. Uh, your over drapery, maybe they're stationary panels. So you you know 
you really want to look at three layers a lot of times because they will add texture and depth and dimension. There's that functional layer, a pretty layer, and then a um, dimensional layer. But it really does always come down to planning, planning, planning so that you don't end up with a scenario like this. Pretty silk draperies, pretty carved um, keystone with a looks like a PVC rod but um, obviously there's an issue here I think these might even be ready-mades because it looks like they're gathered and here's a split here and a split here um, some pre-planning would not have allowed for that you also want to know what your bracket to bracket maximum is particularly when you're working in specialty applications like corner windows or large picture windows um, you need to make sure you always have brackets at stress points and or wherever your splices are for example in on a bay window you also need to um, keep in mind that those are determined by your diameter size so a bracket to bracket maximum sometimes it's called a span is the distance between brackets on a straight rod when nothing's hanging on it before it starts to bend some measuring tips accuracy is a must always think about standardized work orders stack placement Again, left, right, center draw. How much are you going to stack on or off the window? Um, a note might um, come up to where you're measuring it uh, when you're doing your measures. You might want to also um, make some notes on installation in the mounting area. So as you move forward into the project, you um, also, at the same time you're measuring, typically what I do is determine where my bracket placement is going to be. And I use what I call a bracket set, which is basically a keychain that has all the different types of brackets that my drapery hardware manufacturers carry because each manufacturer has a different specifications for their brackets and then also when you're working in specialty windows remember angles are critical consider starting to build a, what I call a designer's toolbox it's about gathering all those materials and putting them in your van or your car and making sure you still have them um, a steel tape measure to 25 feet uh, the Stanley Fat Max is, is a nice one I know a lot of installers recommend that the thing is is if it gets broken or bent or whatever you by the way can turn it in and get a new one you obviously want your measuring forms standardized forms are critical as I mentioned before a protractor blue painters tape I use that for mock-ups um, a digital camera taking before pictures and pictures of work worth a thousand words sometimes I look at a picture and go oh I missed that um, security uh, button or you know I didn't realize that that corner was angle was off or whatever it might be so the camera and having a picture is also critical carry a roll of blackout lining a 10 yard bolt you can order that from any of your jobbers or craft and vellum paper to do templating the bracket key set I mentioned you might also want to do the same thing for blinds and shades as key set and for your rings because again the inside diameter and outside diameter from every drapery manufacturer is different on those rings and a two inch wooden ring is much different than a two inch metal ring cutting samples visualization samples so that the client really knows what she's getting for example I've got a um, 20 inch cut on a one and three eighths inch pole a two inch pole two and a quarter and a three inch wood pole because there's nothing better than to be able to put that up um, about where you want to uh, mount it and show the customer that obviously a two inch diameter really is the right size proportionally here are some extras um, these are available from Roly. Um, the euro stick which is a uh, extends there are three different sizes and I think it extends to over 200 inches um, there's a level on it but it's great for those one person jobs when you've got to measure high ceilings wide windows it's obviously rigid you can set it inside jam to jam and get it and get a very accurate measure this is their heavy duty protractor again for doing um, corners bays bows really comes in handy
to have determined angles. I think this is a must in anybody's installation kit. This is an installation template. So it you can mark where your stirrup holes are from the for center support or down from a ceiling or out and over from the corners, which this we typically always eyeball, don't we? The contour gauge. I have several of these. They come in different lengths. I think the one I have is about 10 inches. Um, it's a series of steel pins in this rigid that are caught in this rigid band. And when you put it up against any kind of reveal, it creates uh, the profile of the reveal. Reveal. This is critical for templating cutouts, for example, or going around um, crown moldings or sink tiles and baths and kitchens. It certainly um, has saved me a lot of heartaches. Steps is another one when you're having to do cutout steps. Digitally, this is a great beginner's measuring um, app for your iPhone or your iPad. As you can see, you can do text bubbles, you can do different colors, it measures in, in metric and imperial. You can apply detailed measures right to the photos and it also has tools which allow you to do angles and um, do sums and square footage, for example, for um, Roman shades. You can put in the two measures and it will tell you what the square footage is. So you can see right up here is where your your sums square footage in those tools. And I love that if you take a straight on shot, you'll get your angles. So let's talk a bit about measuring specialty windows. Now that we've filled up our toolbox and we've made some pre-measuring decisions and done some pre-planning strategies. First off, if when you're working in specialty applications, you really need to know how to make a template. Now, I'm sure all of you are probably uh, familiar with this from a blind and shade perspective, but let's talk a bit about it from working with soft treatments, vapory hardware. Um, again, you want to keep um, this as part of your designer's toolkit in your car, whether it's craft paper or vellum. You want to keep an old um, fabric tube in there so you can always roll up your template, never fold it. Um, I have beaded chain in there in my painter's tape, a Sharpie. I use um, Taylor's chalk. Um, your tape measure, again, maybe you need a utility knife to cut the paper or scissors. Um, possibly you're labeling it. Uh, and then the other thing you want to do is make a phone call to your um, drapery hardware manufacturer before you make the template and find out what they're requiring you to send with the template. Everybody is a little bit different. Uh, you want to make sure that you template the entire opening or the entire area that you're covering. So if you're putting a rod above a window or placing medallions, you want to template the whole area. You want to mark which side is the room size and then ver verify those window measures that are on the template. Roll it up and store it, mark it with a job name and get it ready to send to the hardware manufacturer. Uh, you want to make sure your paper is wide enough. You don't want to ever tape pieces together. And again, don't forget to measure that wall space around the window. Um, sometimes doing a bird's eye view or a digital photo gives more information and attach that uh, or print it out along with a template. I always, The more information you can give a manufacturer, the better off and the more accurate it's going to be. So briefly, this is sort of a step-by-step -step on how I would suggest doing a template. First of all, there's nothing worse than trying to maneuver and fight with a rolled up piece of vellum or craft paper when you're 10 feet up in the air. So place your painter's tape on the wall around the area that's going to be covered and templated first. Then bring your paper up and you can easily slip it out and catch it very quickly without you and without having to fight it. Use Taylor's chalk if you're doing an outside mount. It's basically a piece of chalk. It's square and you can catch the edge of the window and it will mark and trace the edge. You can very faintly see the blue across here. So you'll get the shape of the window. So if you rub the trim uh, so if you like doing a, a stone rubbing, it'll trace the outside edge. 
So now you've got your edge traced. You then you want to go in and mark which, where you want your medallion placement to be or where you maybe want your rod placement to be and draw that on the template because that is also going to be very helpful for um, your workroom when they start making the soft treatments and for your installer when he wants to start measuring it. If you're doing an inside mount template, you might want to cut it out or, and then you also might want to tape along the inner edge and use an X-Acto knife to cut it. Um, sometimes it keeps the tape in the inside in the inner edge will keep it from falling back down you when you're cutting it. This is um, Install Solutions. This is one of their templates and my installer tells me that he's never had a problem with these. These are really accurate. Um, Mark does a great job basically. Uh, you send in a worksheet with all the measurements. He'll give you a, sh a measuring form to tell you what measurements he needs and then he will create a very accurate uh, template and ship it off to the fabricator for you. Arch windows as a specialty application. Several regions of the country really um, seem to thrive on house builders loving to put arch windows in um, their track homes and subdivisions and developments and in other areas we don't see as many but let's talk a bit first about arch windows and the variations of arch windows when it comes to decorative uh, drapery hardware. Two um, extra tools that you might want to use when you're working with arch windows, particularly if they are palladium windows that do not have a mountain between the rectangular lower portion and the arched upper portion. One is the palladium shelf from Lafayette, which is this really pretty routed wooden shelf, which allows you, and I believe you can get it painted or stained in any of their um, wood blind colors. Very similar idea is the floating header from the ultimateinstall.com. It comes in several different sizes, I think six different colors. It's metal. It also gives you four surfaces to Velcro so you can, you know, mount a blind up. You could Velcro across here to attach a valance in front of it. it um, these are the sockets that go in jam to jam and I believe it comes up to something like 20 feet. So you again, when you're having to work with something where can I, I you know, I can't mount this because I don't can't don't have a center support. How am I going to put a drapery rod between the arch and the lower um, window? One of these two might be the solution for you. Also, they make an arch measure. R. H. Rowley uh, company does. This is Firmaflex. This is a uh, composite board, very much like wiggle board that can be glued and screwed and, and nailed. So as you can see here, you can actually create arch treatments because it's bendable. It's um, more expensive. It's um, a little, it's heavier than, than plywood, but it's certainly become sort of the gold standard in workrooms when they're working in specialty treatments because you could upholster this cornice and then mount the rod right to it. I love this notch strip. Again, um, you can also get this Velcroed or unvelcroed. These little notches is where your drapery pin would go, and so and you could mount a um, treatment right into that um, arch lane. The flexi tape measure is great for um, getting measurements of arches, also um, for measuring bed coverings. Don't forget about needing a pin setter because of um, the specialty treatment, and then. This is a must. This is the dustboard hinge plate protector that measures bay angles and arches. And when you turn it upside down, um, it's great for cantering. We'll talk more about that when we get into bays. Here is Kirsch's version of that notch strip from R.H. Rowley. R.H. Rowley's is PVC'd. This is tin. As you can see, there's little screw holes. You screw it up into the arched opening. And then here are your pin pieces for um, your pin hooks. So talking arched windows, talking arch templates, here is a diagram of the perfect arch template. So I've made a template. I've marked it as the room side or the front and whose it is and the client and everything. And then I've marked my placement of the rod. I've noted where the end of the rod is. I, may, I maybe even have noted where I want to put my brackets. 
this detail line tells me exactly where the rod is and in this case because on an arched window you would have to weld your rings I'm even going to show you where to put the rings and how far to space them apart during welding. Um, another um, design option when you're working in arched windows is tableau and actually having a rod attached to tableau where you can hang draperies from so you get sort of the best of both worlds. And remember that most top treatments that you want to put on a rectangular window can certainly be adjusted for arches. If you're doing pleated drapery on arched windows, your leading edge will be longer than your return edge, so you want to either consider tapering those leading edges. Definitely needs to be a stationary treatment, and again, those rings would need to be welded on. Love this treatment because it's pretty straightforward. It's a straight rod, and but the um, draped swags really accent the arched window on this Palladian. Here are some um, of our Orion hardware where we've actually bent a rod and done the branch with the birds and the grapes. As you can see, here's a close-up of it. Here has been used, and this, this was actually one of the recent winners for decorating den interiors, um, arched window in the center and in a bay. So straight rods, and we used our bird finials with the branch to it, and then we used medallions up here for the arched portion. Here's a close-up. They alternated the leaves and the grapes and the um, bird at the top. You also might want to consider staggering and mounting um, arches just on the sides if you don't want to destroy the view. Unfortunately, this beautiful arch doors but wouldn't it have been better if it had been a bent rod, which again, any of your custom manufacturers and, you know, certainly Orion could have made a short section and bent it and a straight section and bent it in another straight section would have been um, so much prettier. Here's um, from Candace Phillips, CPDC Decor. She sent um, Orion a template and they bent it exactly to the eyebrow shape. Measuring corners. We're seeing corner windows coming more and more into play because it gives you a lot of view um, and they're not as expensive as some of the other specialty windows. They are also very difficult to balance as a treatment because the corner here is the focal point. And in a lot of cases, if you don't um, use the correct drapery hardware or the application and created the uh, style you'll that's singular to this corner window you get gaps and and it just doesn't it gets busy into that focal point is where your eye naturally goes here's a, a corner window with um, decorative hardware caught in here with a corner uh, piece and then a valance over the top what you want to do when you're measuring corner windows is you want to take your measure separately so that if anything um, comes to mind, for example, you might think that the windows look like they're even or the equal, but um, when you start taking your measures separately, you realize they aren't. And you also always want to take this measure from window to the corner, window to the corner. Um, you also want to make sure that the client's aware that if you're using drapery rods, that a button bypass, they, they're going to interfere with each other. So we either need to do an angle here and splice it or butt one in and butt one over. So, um, and those do create gaps. Here's a butt, here's a butt and a bypass. You might want to show the draw those out and show your client what you're talking about. So if you are using a corner, you can do a couple of different things. You can use these elbow sockets, but again, every play time you're having a splice or an elbow or a socket of some sort, you've got to have brackets. You can miter them. Um, what you don't want to do is, you know, this would have been a much better treatment if you had had one medallion in the corner in each of these um, corners of this corner window versus treating the windows individually. This looks so much better. Um, obviously the, cor the panel is here because you've got a mantelpiece there. So create that point of emphasis. 
by putting that one piece in the corner. And if you're saying, how am I going to do that medallion? What you're going to do is cut a block like this, just a corner off of a block, mount it into the wall, and then now I have a square piece to put the post for my medallion. Here's um, a, a corner window where actually they just did short rods. There's no reason that you have to bring rods all the way across a window. Here's a mitered scenario. You can bend a rod. You can use um, a 90 degree elbow and slip straight rods into those. And then this is a hinged rod also. So you can get this at 90 degrees or um, I believe at 45 if I'm not mistaken but both of these are really nice options because they give you more flexibility you order this component piece and then you can cut the cut your rods to uh, put your brackets up and cut your rods right on the job site now here again more corner brackets that allow you to maximize the space because you can get a ring here and a ring here that if you need stack back these types of corner brackets will give you um, less stack back bay windows. Again, you want to make sure that you're measuring from the left inside corner to the outside corner, the, the center, and then from the inside corner to the right outside corner. The other thing you want to do is go from one corner to the next, across the interior, left wall to right wall, and you want to do your depth. And then get out your protractor, however, whatever it is, and take those angle measurements. Again, the more information you're giving um, your drapery hardware manufacturer, the better off it's going to be. You want to also ask yourself, is the measure that I'm giving you on the wall or is that at the floor? Was there a baseboard? Because if that baseboard sticks out, in some cases has a toe kick, this can affect your measurements on your rod. The other thing is, is again, like with arches, predetermine where you're going to place those brackets and where your finial is. Where does my rod end? So base of finial to base of finial. Accurate angles are critical. Typically with us, if you provide the wall measurements and the angles, we can cut the rods for you. And, tell, and if you tell us that it's from a base um, of finial to a base of finial and even maybe where you'd like your brackets and what type of angle you're going to use, whether you want these mitered or you're going to use a um, specialty corner splice, um, that kind of information we can customize the, it for you. Another way of measuring is obviously that card trick that you do with the cards. Though there's so many different protractors on the market, I've sort of gotten away from this. This isn't always as accurate. Why would you use miters over a corner piece? Well, one of the reasons might be that it's just stationary and it'll be cleaner and you won't have those, you know, um, it'll just go away. It's also a much less expensive option than having to buy more component pieces, if you will. Typically, there's a wider choice of hardware when you're just doing miters. And the other thing is, is if you're really not sure what, of uh, how or what to do, you will be able to cut that on site, especially if you're using wood poles. A bay bypass bracket. Um, usually what you want to use is a, a stock corner piece for a, sm a smoother splice and then a bypass bracket. bracket. And you want to offset the splice but splice in the bypass bracket away from the corner. So you want to move it down here. And then you either want to miter or weld or glue and screw the, the corner and then put the bracket here for support and you don't have all that busyness in, in brackets and brackets. This is a, a good way um, of doing the drapery hardware if you've got tight clearances and the brackets um, are hitting each other when they're close to the miter, for example. The other thing in bay windows is keep in mind that finials were meant to be seen from the profile, not straight on. And when you're putting a finial on a bay, uh, bay drapery hardware treatment, you basically see the, the straight on shot, you don't see the finial. So um, maybe you'll want to request a finial adapter or ask that the finial rod, portion of the rod be bent back so that you do see that profile. 
This is a great bay treatment again from one using one of our iron art rods from one of our designers. And again, here we're using, you know, two short rods. What I love about this is to ching to ching, I've sold four finials rather than two. And I've really sort of um emphasized this beautiful view out here with the center window. Bows. Keeping in mind when you're measuring bows, you need to have this curved side measure, you need to have this face width, and then you need to have the depth. You also will need a template. There are two types of bows. There's a concave bow where the rod is inside and it curves away from the center of the room, or the convex bow where the rod is on the outside and it comes into the center. The other thing to remember for a tip when you're choosing this style of drapery hardware is that twisted rods bend easier and they so it can be less expensive for you and it also can be a nice decorative touch. When you're doing bending bows, it's probably not um, the best option to sell a functioning treatment. You want to get into one of our either um, fascia styles with tracks or some sort of um, iron piece with a track on the back that can be bent. When you're making templates for bows, a couple of steps. You want to cut your strips of paper and you want to use packing tape and tape the, the pieces securely together in a piece that's large enough to fill the whole area. Then you want to lay the paper inside the bow and then using masking tape hold the paper in place at the inner straight edge of the bows. Starting in the center, start smoothing it out, out and then creasing the paper along the base of the wall. Maybe using a pencil or tailor's chalk or something or sharpie to define that crease and provide a cutting line. Then cut the template along the pencil line and let the it fall back into the bow and mark put all your marks on it, whether it was at the baseboard or the wall, where the ends of the rods are going to be, what side of the template is up, you know, what allowance do you need to make for your treatments? And remember that if you, the rod measure is going to be over 200 inches, you've got to splice it. So then where, not only am I putting my brackets, but where do I want that splice? So in a bow window, here's a perfect template from this paper edge that fits into the bow. I've noted where the end of the rod is. I noted where I'm going to put my brackets. I've made notes where the windows are and then also where I want it spliced. And this side up. When you're working and choosing treatments that require drapery hardware on a bow window, you want to remember to emphasize the shape, not necessarily disguise it. And you, So you want to take a bit of restraint in your details and avoid fussy top treatments and tiny little ditzy prints because they do get too busy. Remember that top treatments shouldn't cover too much of the glass. Obviously, the idea, he, the reason they put the bow in was to expand their view, and that the top treatment sizes are in proportion with what else is happening on the window in the room. Here's a before and after. This was an interesting bow window, 12 inches of drywall here, and then there was a glass ceiling, and then it was a um, five section bow. And this is what we did. We filled in the um, piece from the glass ceiling to the window, allowing us to, to make this deeper because the ceilings were vaulted and that we, we didn't want a skimpy valance. And then we also bent the finial back for proportion. And as you can see, it comes over here to the rosettes because the client wanted the rosettes to show. They paid extra for it. You know that. Here's another bow window where, again, it's just a smaller rod, but great idea. Thinking ahead, I'm sure the designer or the um, window covering professional said, oh, white trim, crown, let's do white um, brackets. Unfortunately, they show up, I think they really show because of the stained wind, uh, wood on the rod. This is a Barclay Butera. This is a bow window. I uh, love this with all this crown and egg and uh, dart uh, trim work up here in the crown. And actually these almost look like towel rings and the rod sits into the towel ring so that the, it drops below the crown so you can see the beautiful crown. 
doors and sliders, whether it's a slider, a French door, a true French door that opens in, an atrium door that one side is fixed and the other swings. You know, this is the best $30 you're ever going to spend for Dre. This is um, Rolly's door swing hardware. Here you can see typical what we call a knockout bay in the, in the uh, Midwest. Door opens up two windows typically the windows are not ever at the same height as the door and you end up having to do three valances or what so that the door opens well here with the door swing hardware and by the way there's videos available to tell you how to do this and how to mount it the treatment is broken here and it's hinged here and when this door opens in it opens up C-rings is another thing you use. Hold backs, something that you'll also want to make sure you have because um, particularly on doors, you'll get some, um, you know, whipping around of the treatment outside the door or if, for, if you have the door open for ventilation. I happen to like this one because it hinges up and goes away, but you can come down at the um, hemline and catch it so it doesn't blow into, out on the deck, for example. So some other specialty hardware. Remember that all metal decorative hardware will have matching finials and brackets and components to it. And so you can, um, you know, when you order a set, everything's going to match. But there's no reason to say that you can't mix and match. All you have to do is specify those kinds of componentry and bracket placement if you're dependent on having an assembled set make, made from the manufacturer. C-rings and bypasses. The bypass stirrup is cut smaller than a typical stirrup bracket and the ring is cut, cut with a C, a backward C, and it allows the drapery to um, bypass and go through a center support. Um, didn't have these for, uh, for quite a while when I first started out and um, I think they've been on the market now for probably about 10 um, years. One thing to keep in mind as you can see, look at this stirrup bracket comes up, it's more decorative, this is smaller, and it definitely has to set the rod into a set screw or it, wa it will want to tip out when you're pulling it. These are typically hand baton, and the weight of the drapery will keep the um, C-ring vertical. So when you're working with shears, when you're working with shears, what might happen is this wants to tip up. And if that is the case, then you might need to add beaded chain to the weight of it, or you want to tell your client at the very least that when they're drawing it across the center support, they might find that it's a little bit difficult to move it across. So make sure that when you're closing and using bypass brackets that um, It'll, it pulls better when the leading edge has force and the rings are spaced apart. So when you're opening pleats, they can tend to bunch up and causing the rings to um, make it harder to bypass the brackets. Tell your client that. Sometimes they can catch if the weight is not holding vertical. Other types of rings are the clip ring. Here's a hook ring. There's lots of different kinds. Clip rings really are not recommended for heavy treatments. Eyelet rings are always the best. They're really designed to work with drapery pins. And usually um, this clip tends to show, I, this is more of a ready-made scenario. I like the true um, eyelet rings. Batons. You're going to need a baton. Otherwise, the customer is going to be grabbing that leading edge and it's going to get dirty and oily and soiled. You can do fluted, fiberglass. Those are your basics. There's a couple of different kinds of adapters and clips. Or um, we can do decorative um, batons for you, whether we use our twisted or ridged or solid with a decorative finial on the bottom. So here's the baton hooked on the first ring. Some people hook it on the first ring, some do on the second. You also, um, other specialty hardware that you wanna have is you wanna make sure you have connecting screws thrown into your toolkit. They do make inside sockets. Center supports for wood that allow you to um, hide the center support. There's a screw on the back of the wooden pole that clips into this. 
different wooden brackets whether it's a swivel corner a cup bracket or the flat bracket I'm not a big fan of flat brackets I much prefer the wooden cup brackets and then you also have your elbows if you want to do wooden French poles where you can see here's this bracket that center support bracket that allows you to attach into the wall into the back of the pole and catch it poles with tracks um, another specialty application here you've got a double traverse both are decorative and you have a track mounted on the back side with C rings typically you can buy them with with C rings or without C rings in their all traversing systems they're not hand-drawn systems sometimes you have layering issues when you're talking about um, poles and um, shears behind it that you need to have them function for example here you've got a decorative pole two inch wood pole with two inch rings and then they did a metal pole behind it maybe not the best look if you will uh, so you really want to think this out and pre-plan it remember when you're doing stationary panels on a wood or an iron pole and you're putting a track behind it see what happens you ha still have a drop on your over draperies which your shear will show through a better scenario might be for the client is using a pole with a track this app um, like our Ryan's track and pole systems which by the way are available both in iron and in metal and you don't have that showing. You might want to consider fascia traversing systems. It's a decorative look. There's actually a track behind a finished rod. You can do C or cut rings. You can also do bypass rings with it. You can do um, a functional track. And now these um, slides and tracks are available in several different colors. You can do an integrated traverse system where the carriers actually move through a channel that's into the center of the rod and you can do it both manually with rings, without rings, or you can motorize. And you might want to consider 3D hardware. Maybe you have a scenario where it's wall to wall, but you want to do a decorative finial. This is actually bent around back onto the rod so that you can um, see the profile of the finial. I've mentioned this a couple of times. It really is important to understand drapery weights and the kind of fabrics that you're choosing for your treatments and figuring out whether or not A, the drapery is going to be too heavy for the rod you chose or too light. Um, here are some simple formulas. Typically you multiply your total yardage by one of the following. If you're lining and using a, a, a multi-purpose drapery fabric, figure three quarters of a pound per yard. If it's drapery fabric plus blackout, move up to a, a pound a yard. And if you're thinking about drapery hardware or drapery fabric, blackout and inner lining, it's a pound and a half. The other thing to remember is, again, is the span on that. So if I've got a lined and inner lined drapery, what is the maximum span that I can have between two brackets before that rod starts to bend? Typically, another formula, one inch rod, the maximum suggested span is 90 inches, but I would never go maximum unless I had to. And again, I would choose a fabric that was going to be lighter in weight. Medallions. You usually have a post, a wall plate, and a face medallion on all medallions. And the face medallion is decorative. Then this screws in and the post um, can be, in some cases, cut down in, or it's a typical uh, rod projection of, you know, three and a half or um, four, six in a cover. So what's this total area that I'm going to cover? And then I'm going to measure the number of um, attachment points I want and divide that into the area and I'll know what how f um, many seconds I would need. Here's a couple of ways to um, bring your treatment, mount your treatment to medallions. This is using a grommet. I think that's a great idea. Or what about an S hook or a shower hook because then you could put a drapery pin right onto that. 
Holdbacks and retainers, we've talked about that. What we haven't talked about is concealed tieback holders. If you're taking stationary or functioning treatments and you're tying them back, you should always sell a concealed tieback holder because it um, helps with crushing back against other layers and blinds and shades. And it also, um, it, it also, as you can see, gives you a straighter line on the return edge versus an hourglass look. Here's, here's the concealed tie back holder. You catch one edge on the back side, you wrap it around, and you catch it on the inner side. Last but not least, let's finish up with some design inspiration. Love this. Here's a bow uh, dining area where they did a circular rod. How cool is that? Um, here, remember, you want to talk about whether or not you're going to be doing functional where the drapery treatment falls below the rod, or if you're doing something stationary, how far up above the rod or onto the rod will that treatment fall. Another great um, swag and cascade on iron art rod. This, I love this. This was a, um, a corner or a wall to wall window that had these little columns on either side. And you've got a ripple fold track for the shears and then the over drapery. Uh, and it's also a ripple fold track that was bent around the column. So it created almost like a, a fluted, rounded column on either side of the over drapery and they function. Here's a great example of our uh, 3D hardware with the branch. Or here's an example of working with uh, one of our designers where they, she created a really contemporary ring for this grommeted panels at, along with um, the finial with the ring that catches the drape and the, the medallion. An arched window, arched swag with a straight section to hold your panel. Corner more corner rods mitered and um, using centerpiece. Don't forget about the embossed cornices that you can bend to any spilty application. Or here, this is one of the uh, out of the burgundy collection, the open work pieces and here you can see you get a return with it and then you can bring the drapery up underneath and this is pencil pleat tape. Really pretty. Swing arms they work great on doors. Or who said you can't take drapery hardware and finials and make headboards out of them? These are from Lori Medford from um, Rolly Company. And every time she shows this, she gets oohs and ahs, whether it's at a trade show or in a presentation. And I love this concept. So thanks so much for joining us. We want to um, encourage you to go on to facebook.com and like our page um, Iron Art by Orion. Don't forget to start pinning with us on Pinterest. We're also on Pinterest as Orion. And if you have pictures, please post them to Designers Pride. Uh, for those of you that are working with a distributor or maybe you're a new account to us and haven't found a distributor yet, please visit our website at Iron Art by orion.com and go to the distributors page and they'll be listed alphabetically by state. Thanks so much.